Hello and welcome. My name's Andrew Goodman and currently I'm doing a bit of a training series, a bit of a training course here on YouTube, teaching you how to use this brilliant app, which is Affinity Photo on the iPad. Through the course, through the training, I'm going to teach you some tips, some techniques that I've picked up, which I think will also really help you. I'm very excited because in today's video, we're going to be looking at the pen tool in Affinity Photo, a really, really powerful tool in Affinity Photo. And what makes it more powerful is this here, the Apple Pencil. In this video, we're going to be looking at the pen tool, pen modes, and the different tools associated with it. Cutting out an object, learning some pen tool gestures, tips and tricks on how I personally cut out objects, making selections, making masks, and feathering selections, and much, much more. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's just go into Affinity Photo on the iPad Pro. And let's go into the project we were working on in our last video about gestures. Just a few Back to the Future items placed together. What I think would be good for this video is to cut out the DeLorean with the pen tool. The pen tool in Affinity Photo is so powerful and it's a lot of fun to use. It really is a lot of fun to use. I've used Photoshop for a long, long time. I have a Wacom tablet, but this is much better for cutting out and doing different things. So I'm just going to click the pen tool here on the left hand side. Straight away, it gives us a few options at the bottom. This new menu appears at the bottom of Affinity Photo. Edit mode. There's a mode saying here, pen, smart, polygon, line. And back to pen. I always use pen. I think you get the best control out of the pen mode. There's also width, color. I always keep the color to to clear because normally I'm cutting out stuff and then we'll get to these things as we move on. My plan is to cut out the DeLorean and Marty here and then maybe place an image below it. So to do that, I'm just going to zoom in. You can, you can start anywhere, really. Uh, I like to get nice and close. As I said in the previous tutorial, just to pinch in, to zoom in. And we'll maybe just start at this bit here. So if you just click that, put your first node down. Another click, if you click and drag, you can see we handles starting to appear. I like to get nice and close and try to get in as close as I can. And normally cut in a wee bit, maybe just a wee pixel or two. So I'm not going right to the edge again rotating the canvas pinch with two fingers and rotate and it's just a really nice way of uh, making it easier with the pen tool so I'm just clicking and dragging clicking and dragging and if I go like that you can see you lose a lot of control if you do that and then go off it if you click in the edit mode you can click one of these these wee handles and bring it back under control you can do Lots of mad stuff with that. I'm going to click out that again and then it will take us back to that. Again, if you make a mistake, two fingers, and that's what's so good about doing this on a Finley photo. Here's a nice big straight bit, so we try to uh, get to about there, a nice straight line, and then bring it up here. Again, just dragging, we'll curve it. In the last video, we had a lot of gestures, a lot of shortcuts. I left some out concerning the pen tool. We'll just do a few of them now. So say I come to this point and for whatever reason, I want to make this a sharp angle. If we hit here and then with one finger down, you can see that we go sharp angles. Also, if we make a mistake, say we do that, if we hit two fingers down on this node, we can move this back into place. So we'll just do that again. So, oh, made a mistake. Two fingers, move the node. And uh, that's a very good shortcut too. Again, two fingers will drag the canvas to see if you're using the hand tool. And we'll just, just zoom out to make sure, yep, yep, we're getting the right, the right bit of the DeLorean. Just while I'm cutting out the DeLorean here, some people have asked about my accent and where I am from. I am from Northern Ireland. And if you know anything about the DeLorean, you will know that the DeLorean was actually made in Northern Ireland. Made in a place called Dunmurray, which is actually about a half an hour drive from where I am recording this YouTube video. So there you go. There's a bit of information you may or may not have wanted to know. 
So I'm just following this along here. It's getting a wee bit, uh, I think this is maybe a shadow. I'm not sure. I'll just, I'll, fo I'll follow it around anyway. It'll not matter. It'll not matter too much. Again, just trying to keep it pretty precise. We're almost here at the bottom. Bring it here and it's around here. I'm going to move that a wee bit closer. That's us on Mar Marty. So sometimes it's a wee bit fiddly, but it is an awful lot of fun, especially if you come from a background where I did of using Wacom tablets and Photoshop. Just to be able to draw on the screen is absolutely fan fantastic. If you make a mistake, two fingers again. There's another wee mistake. So, so Sometimes it deselects it, so it'll go back to pen tool. What happened there is if you hold down, it gives you two options. Again, the node, you can move the node about or move the handles about. But I want to go back into the pen and continue on here. So I'm going to try to do it a wee bit quicker. Again, normally I'm maybe more precise than this, but... I'll well, maybe just speed up this next wee bit. Okay, so we're nearly back round now. And you can go off the edge of the canvas and make selections. Which is nice. So here we are. Well, let me just bring that bit drag out. And that is our DeLorean and Marty McFly cut out. So we'll have a few options here. We can f fill this in. We don't want to, but just for to show you what happens if we fill this in red. It's now filled in red. That can be useful for some circumstances, but not for us. We'll change that to see through and then click hide. We can mask that and then we have a nice mask. If I just click out of this, you can see it's a nice clean mask all the way around. Uh, you also know it's a mask by going to the Layer Studio and we can see a mask here. We're going to talk much, much more about masks on a different video, but just so, just so you know, that's how you know it's a mask too. But I don't want to do that. So two fingers back, we'll go into our pen tool and we can make a selection and that's where we get our marching ants. How I make selections and I think it's a good habit to get into is by doing just what I showed you, go two fingers, instead of masking it this way. And again, I'm going to talk about masking. And if, if you're not sure about masking, don't worry, there's a video coming up. We can just cut it out. Masking's a type of cutting out. If I make a selection, I then go to the selections persona. And then down to this wee button here, feather selection tool. Now what this is going to do is it is going to feather our selection ever so slightly. Well, just to show you, you can make it wild, like say 253.9%. If we click apply, and then if we go up here, the layer select it and go to mask, you can see a really wild feather is applied to this selection. We're not going to do that. Go back into feather. Normally what I do is about 1.5 to 2. We'll do 1.5 in this video of a feather. Why do I do that? It's just when you're compositing, when you're blending stuff in together, when you're using layers, a feathered edge, it's just nicer in the eye. It's more believable and it's not a harsh edge. So if I go to apply, you can hardly even notice the difference. Go up, layer select it and down to mask. Now to deselect, there's two ways you can deselect. We can simply come up to here and hit deselect or what I do is just one finger deselect. And if we go in here, you can see it's just feathered ever so slightly. Didn't do a good job there, did I? But uh, it's just, it's a nicer job. Just to show you what it looks like with a harsh outline. So if we go back a few times, add mask later, add feather. So if we have no feather applied, one finger to deselect this. You can see it's, it's very harsh. It's a harsh line and it just kind of sticks out more and it, it looks like you've cut it out. 
with a pen tool. Whereas, let's go back last time, I promise, go back to Feather 1.5. Okay. And then always remember to hit apply, and that applies to Feather. Sometimes I've hit 1.5, went to do the mask, and I forgot about uh, applying it. So the Feather won't work unless you hit apply. So plus mask. And then if we hold one finger down, that simply deselects it. You will notice there's another wee piece here of in between Marty's arm. So we'll maybe quickly do that now to go back to the photo photo persona, hit the pen tool, and away we go again. So there you go. Uh, not too neat and tidy, but uh, a decent job. So you just seen there, we can click and we're going to do different things here. We're not going to do this at the time being, but uh, sometimes in these wee contextual toolbars, there's wee white arrows and that's just giving you more options. So again, we will select this, go into Selections, Persona, hit Feather, 1.5, OK, Apply. We're going to talk more about masks, but if we go in... Go back to the photo persona, change this brush to white. Simply ask just masking out that section. And then there we have it. There's Marty and the DeLorean looking well. Just before we end this tutorial, we'll just clean this up a wee bit. We'll go into the layers persona. We'll go into the picture of the clock tower. Maybe make it a wee bit bigger. I'll bring up this layer of Marty and the DeLorean just so it goes in behind and that's looking let me move this text down again one one click on the layer will select it we will center that we'll just move the clock tower make it a wee bit bigger move it over here Yeah, something like that's not looking looking too bad. And I've got an idea for what to put below here. If I just move my finger up here, we'll bring the photos tab across. And I've already downloaded this from the internet. Drag it over. That appears. Take this away. We'll move this to the bottom layer. Click and drag to the bottom layer. Make it a bit bigger. Let's just see. How this looks. Probably don't want the DeLorean to be seen. It'd be nice to have the mountains in. This is just really just playing about with it. That doesn't look too bad there. I think that'll do us for today's project. We've got uh, Back to the Future 1, Back to the Future 2, and Back to the Future 3 just in the background here. So, uh, yeah, I think that's quite nice. And, uh, yep, that'll do us for this project. So there you go. Hopefully you've learned something, and hopefully there's a few tips and techniques that'll help you cut out your objects better in a Findlay photo. Please feel free to like this video. Please subscribe. That would mean a lot. There's going to be a lot more training videos coming out on a Findlay photo on the iPad. Please feel free to leave a comment also. I read every comment and reply to them. If you have any suggestions for videos you would like to see, please drop them in the comments below and I'll add them to the list. In the next video, we're going to be looking at grids and we're going to be looking at guides and setting up guides and how to use guides and showing a few examples of how I use guides. That's going to be coming out in a few days and it should appear up here. So please feel free to click that video. But until then, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.